call the September 26, 2023 council meeting to order and I'm going to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Ms. Walden. Here. Mr. Chambers. Here. Ms. Mapp. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Oh, okay. Dr. Lee. Here. Ms. Schenholster. Here. All right, we do have a quorum present. If you will, please stand with me for the prayer and pledge. Heavenly Father, we thank you on tonight for allowing us to come together to meet, to discuss the business of this city. We thank you right now, God, that we keep ourselves in the right perspective, that we can disagree to agree. We ask you right now that you touch each and every heart that we'll present here tonight. Touch each and every council member that has to hear what the people have to say. And then, Father, we just thank you for your continued blessings as you look over the bereaved families, the sick and shut in. We ask that you continue to be with our first responders, our teachers, our bus drivers, all that make up this community to keep us safe. What is these and many more blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, so next up on our item for tonight is public comments. And the first uh, people we'll be hearing from, or persons we will hear from, is Mr. David Sinclair with the Baldwin Investment Group. So Mr. Sinclair, if you will, come up to the podium. And um, just state your name and address. And Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my name is David Sinclair, and my address is 156 Northwoods Drive, Milliesville, Georgia. And um, I thank you for allowing me to take possession of the podium for a short three minutes. The um, purpose is to inform you all that uh, my company, BIG, which is Baldwin Investment Group, um, have a contract that has been signed by both parties for the property at 105 117 South Wayne Street and that's the property that's had the barrier around it for some time. Uh, we are anxious to move forward and uh, make progress with taking possession. Uh, right now there's a 45 day due diligence period and I, I do understand that there is a, a lien placed on the property by the city and I'm hoping that that can be resolved sooner rather than later and my attorney is in contact with uh, the Mr. Jimmy Jordan here and uh, I'm looking forward to taking full possession of the property um, following the 45 day due diligence period to allow work to pro pro progress just as soon as possible. Um, there, there is a two phase approach, there is obviously demolition, stabilizing the facade and um, then having our architect prepare plans for the future development of the property uh, and we're looking forward to being involved in another downtown development and thank you for your time and if there's any questions I'll be pleased to answer them. We, we normally don't ask questions on the um, public input so thank you for coming and sharing with us tonight. Thank you Madam Mayor, thank you everybody. Mm -hmm. To sign up for public comments tonight. Okay. Right. So you all have received um, a copy. Did I miss it? You all have received a copy of the September 12th Council meeting minutes. Are there any corrections that need to be made to these minutes? Hey, I think it dropped a million. Something about the Jamaica. Okay. 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 There being none, is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Okay. September 12th uh, minutes were adopted as official. Um, Call the roll. 
Let me see. Call the roll. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I need to call the roll. Let me settle down. Mr. Dennis, would you please call the roll, please? Miss Walden. Aye. Mr. Chambers. Aye. Miss Mapp. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Dr. Lee. Aye. Miss Shinholster. Aye. All right, so the minutes have been properly uh, adopted. At this time, um, before my mayor's comments, I'm going to, well, let me give my mayor's comment. Mr. Dillon, did you put that off for me? She'd be right up under. You're least of Before we have our presentations on tonight, I'm gonna. I have a few comments um, as far as the mail, uh, the mayor's comments. Uh, one thing I want to give an input, and Mr. Griffin will help me out. We both attended a meeting uh, about a week or two ago about the C uh, Central State Hospital Redevelopment Authority. Uh, the buildings that are going to be or noted at this time that will be demolished. And so we had, uh, who's that, Commissioner? Uh, Commissioner Tanner. Tanner, that came down from Atlanta to, to basically hear what <coughs> we as leaders wanted to say and how we felt about um, going about making, having this demolition done and the different things we wanted to see and in a roundabout nutshell, I think the basic thing is we all want to see that it's done properly and that we, it's done within the welfare and safety of the community. Um, how they would do it, uh, they went line by line and shared with us how it will be done. Um, right now, if I'm not mistaken, there's a stop gap right now, Mr. Griffin. That's correct. That we're not moving forward with it until um, Commissioner Tanner is able to take back what he learned from us as leaders, um, what we are concerned about in our community, and making sure that the welfare and safety of our community is um, taken at he uh, adhered to. The other um, piece I wanted to bring before council tonight is that the county commissioners have already appointed their people for the land bank authority, so we're kind of lagging. What I would like to see is a balanced board there. And my thinking is um, that we do some bankers, uh, possibly uh, real estate people, um, some lawyers, you know, some, someone with the inside knowledge to help them to move forward and what they need to move forward to be able to make sure that any building that they tear down or we accept under the House Land Bank Authority that is, um, this proper use and how we use it and go about obtaining those particular land bank properties will be in place. Now, what I would like from you guys is to um, think of someone by next Tuesday. Let me know who you're thinking about as far as an appointment. Uh, I do have um, or maybe five people in mind, but I would like to hear from you all as to how you think uh, or what you think we could put on that board that would be meaningful. One thing as the mayor I'm gonna say, I, I really don't wanna see one of us on it. I think it would be unfair for us as an entity to put one of our board members on it. We need people that's gonna be open-minded to what they're doing and uh, how they're doing it and be supportive of it. Uh, as long as it's moving in the right direction. And then the other piece I want to mention is that the ad hoc committee about the statute, I'm going to try to go ahead and put that in place this week so that we can move that on along and find out the necessary information we need to be able to cover that. In discussing it with Mr. Jordan and Mr. Griffith and Mr. Chambers, you know, we, we once put that ball in the place of of the NAACP hands to find a place. I know a place has been determined, but that might not be the proper place. And as you all know, we gotta have specifics when we move or if the statute is moved according to the guidelines of the law. 
So I will go ahead and put that in place this week. I got enough time to go ahead and reach out to people. If it's someone you want to see that might make a great contribution, uh, I want it to be balanced on each side where you're going to have some opposing people, you're going to have some people for it, and maybe a chairperson uh, to, to keep the order there. And then we'll move forward from there as a council, if that's okay with council. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with everyone? Is that okay, Don? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead. I have a few, a present, one presentation for tonight, and that's one proclamation for and two organizational updates. Okay. So I'm going to come around, and I'm going to ask everyone that's here with the Gloria Walker Day proclamation, y'all to come around and stand up front outside of the podium, please. coming around there to you. Okay. Well, they're going to come around this way. Well, I'm telling you. They were. Yeah, right. I apologize. They're going to block council. Hmm? Mm, we're not visible. They, they, yeah, take them. They need. They need to be the one in the picture. <laughs> right. Go ahead. It. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, we, we're fine. If they're, if they're no, no, we're real fine. Real. No, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. All right. So this proclamation, actually, I missed the event. Hate I missed the event. I had got me a pair of cowboy boots and some jeans, and I was ready, but. I did, <laughs> but unfortunately I could not make it, but I think this is an outstanding proclamation that we're giving, given that this person was a um, born and raised person around here. She um, has a lot. If you ever look, up or look her up, on go or just Google her. And so let me read the proclamation so you can get the history of her, because she was born here in Millersville, Georgia. And it says, Proclamation of the Office of the Mayor of the city of Millersville, Georgia. Whereas Gloria Walker was born in Millersville, Georgia, and became a hometown icon, an entertainer that lit up this nation's airways and stages. And whereas Gloria Walker and a handful of her high school friends formed a musical group called Gloria Walker and the Chevelles in 1968, before my time. And whereas Gloria Walker and the Chevelles, armed with great musical talent, hard work, and big dreams, created a rhythm and blues and soul act that soared to nation's fame in the late 1960s. With their 1968 breakthrough hit, Talking About My Baby. Hmm, okay. And whereas highlights of their career included climbing the Billboard's charts, sprinting to the top of the R&B charts, and ultimately playing the world-famous Apollo Theater in New York City. And whereas Gloria Walker dazzled the world with her silk, silky voice and ability to tell a soulful story through song. And whereas, even though, as many groups do, Gloria Walker and the Chevelles broke up, Gloria and the members of the Chevelles maintained a close relationship throughout the decades that followed. And whereas it is fitting, fitting to point the spotlight at a career that shines as brightly as the lights at the Apollo Theater and on someone who is so positively reflected on her hometown of Millersville. Now, therefore, I, Mary Parm Copeland, as a mayor, as the mayor, of the city of Millersville do hereby proclaim, and that was Saturday, September the 20th, September the 16th, 2023, as Gloria Walker Day in the city of Millersville and urge all citizens to learn about Gloria Walker and the Chevelles to appreciate the contribution 
to music history and their addition to <coughs> Millersville's rich patchwork of life. I have hereto set forth my hand and caused this seal to be affixed on this 16th day of September 2023. And it is signed by me, Mary Parham Copeland. We have um, a few presentations, if they're present here tonight. Um, okay. So I see Mr. Nelson. So I assume Mr. Nelson and gonna, uh, uh, the Greenway Authority will be making a presentation tonight. Are we good to go? Yes, sir. Well, I, first off, I appreciate the opportunity to share with y'all. Uh, Mr. A little bit about our uh, Greenway uh, uh, Greenway project and uh, what we have accomplished recently and give you some information about where we hope to go from here uh, as you as you may know the Greenway Authority is overseen by a nine-member board uh, I'm ser currently serving as treasurer of that organization my friend Bo Edwards is the vice chairman and uh, Bill Caldwell the president of GMC is currently serving as president of the chairman chairman of the Greenway Authority uh, a, a, a few moments of background just, just to catch us up to speed. More than 20 years ago, there were some local visionaries with far more vision than I ever had that, uh, that envisioned uh, a, a, a riverfront park along the Oconee River in Milledgeville. And it was sort of spearheaded by what was going on in Macon at the time. The establishment of the uh, Oak Muggy Heritage Trail was getting a lot of buzz. There was a lot of a lot of press and a lot of enthusiasm about that and some local leaders uh, were, were, were quick to recognize well we've got this gym down here called the Oconee River that's nearly f flowing through the within a few blocks of downtown you know why, why don't we uh, why, why don't we see can't we acquire some funding and develop a riverfront park and a trail system down here so that's sort of how that got started and with the help of a million dollar transportation enhancement grant, I believe Jim Marshall was the represent, U.S. representative at that time, was uh, successful in, in, in getting that initial funding. And of course, uh, with the cooperation of the city and the county, with some splashed money as uh, local match, uh, began a, a project of developing the Greenway. And I can tell you that it's, for me, it's been overwhelmingly su successful. Uh, bear with me a second. Let me put this up. Uh, and here, most recently, we were about 2001, I'm sorry, about 2012, the Greenway Authority was successful in getting another transportation enhancement grant, a federal grant for a million dollars and at that time it was our our focus our objective was <coughs> to extend the trail system south down the Oconee River 
eventually winding up terminating uh, at uh, Central State Hospital property. We had spoken with the Redevelopment Authority. They were on board and supportive of this, and there were only about five or six parcels of land that would have to be crossed in order to do that, but Mr. Edwards and I experienced uh, some pushback from, from uh, a particular landowner, and uh, they, he, he didn't want to participate in that, even though we were projected to stay on the sewer easement all the way along this corridor. Anyway, that sort of threw a wrinkle in that. The grant had already been awarded to the Greenway Authority, but about this same time, Dr. Jim Lidstone, who was at that time a professor at Georgia College, he's since retired, moved, moved away. But Dr. Lidstone had proposed uh, a Fishing Creek Community Trail <coughs> that would follow the Fishing Creek Corridor up to Georgia College and the master plan called for the trail extension all the way out to West Campus and eventually connecting with Walter B. Williams. And uh, so our board was faced with somewhat of a dilemma at that time. We had already been awarded this grant and we said, well, if we can, if we can get approval for a change of scope, we would apply this financial resource to the Fishing Creek Community Trail and we will at least try to jump start that construction by getting the trail extended to Central Park, or many of us know that as Bonner Park. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I can't tell you that it's been easy. There's been, uh, <laughs> there's been some, some, some bumps along the way that uh, Mr. Griffith can well attest to, but uh, we started on that process some years ago to extend the trail to Central Park. Little did we know that we were going to run into some engineering issues and some timing issues and some land acquisition issues. <clears throat> there were a lot of false starts, but uh, we have completed that project just in this year. And uh, since this transportation enhancement grant was a reimbursement grant, we were also, the Greenway Authority was faced with the dilemma of, well, how are we going to pay for this? Because we've got to have money up front in order to pay the contractors and then apply for reimbursement. We thank you all uh, sincerely. The city stepped up. Well, a actually, Mr. Edwards and I had, had years ago, we had actually talked to Mr. Jarrett when he was the city manager about helping with this. And we had laid the groundwork at that time. but. Of course, when Mr. Griffith became the, the city manager, uh, previously as the city planner, he was on board with what we were planning on doing. And anyway, I'm here to say that uh, with y'all's help, you know, the city stepped up and fronted the money for this project. And uh, the, the county stepped up with splash dollars. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to tell you that the program manager in Atlanta says that we have covered all the bases, we have submitted everything that we needed to submit, and although they have not said the check's in the mail, they said the check is being prepared for mailing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I reference an email to Mr. Griffith that I just got today from the program manager who says, well, it's being reviewed by the local GDOT office. So, I mean, I, the level of bureaucracy has been <laughs> To say stunning would be an <laughs> understatement, but nevertheless, uh, you're going to get your money according to the program manager, and uh, Mr. Griffith and I are both crossing our fingers. Uh, I want to take an, a, a moment, I'm going to try to use this laser and show you all what we have done and what we are hoping to do. The current project, if you'll, if you'll follow along with me on this depiction here, I'm going to reference this section right here where the laser is. That's the Piggly Wiggly South parking lot right there. We have just completed eight tenths of a mile of paved walking trail that extends from Elbert Street right here, which is Georgia Highway 112, follows the Fishing Creek Corridor around behind the Piggly Wiggly South, and then makes a northerly turn up Flag Chapel Lane and it terminates on West Franklin Street at Flag Chapel Church. Having no idea whether we got, how much money, how far our money was going to go, we did this project with a number of bid alternates and we had enough money, barely, 
to pay this, well, let me say this, in conjunction with a grant that the city supplied, this, this was a really complex problem because the city had grant money to, to apply to this project, the Greenway Authority had federal monies to apply to this project, and we were trying to do it together in order to realize some economy of scale. It really was complex to manage, but with Mr. Griffith's help, we got it done. I, and I can't thank uh, your paymaster, Shane. What is Shane's? James. Shane Dancy. <laughs> mm -hmm. she, she was a godsend, I'm mm -hmm. telling you. But at any rate, we have, we have finished that project uh, 0.83 miles from Elbert Street to uh, West Franklin Street. Now, originally, originally our plan had been to follow the Fishing Creek Corridor all the way to Harrington Drive, but we we ran into three huge impediments, not the least of which was money. We uh, we had to install a pedestrian bridge on this section that cost us about eighty thousand dollars. It was a prefab bridge that was made in Alabama and was brought over here and set in place. Eighty thousand dollar chunk of bridge, we couldn't do that twice. The other the other significant issues were that the original proposal was going to direct the trail underneath Norfolk Southern Railway on West Franklin Street. We wasted about six months just trying to get to the appropriate Norfolk Southern individual. And we <laughs> <were down laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, that's <laughs> all it took. I know. Damn thing. The railroad. My grand affidavit was up in about two months. No. <laughs> then, then we get a call from GDOT that says, you're about to your your grant's about to expire, and I mean, we, we man, we we had people working seven days a week on this project. Mm -hmm. We were so afraid that we were going to lose mm -hmm. the funding. But at any rate, uh, let me mention too that, 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 that Hank was the city planner at that point. It had to been for Hank's input on this and his guidance on this. We were just following the trail we would have gotten made. So he, he really stepped up and, and uh, had some of these things. What we really wanted to share with you tonight, though, is what remains. Uh, if you'll notice this blue section and the green section there, there's about 0.56 miles of unpaved trail <coughs> sort of in the middle of the Greenway project between the GMC project that's currently paved and what we just paved. We've got 0.56 miles of unpaved trail. It is a usable it is a usable graded trail now and it's used every day by, by citizens and cadets and students, Georgia College, Georgia College students, uh, GMC cadets, but uh, we're, 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 the design and, and the objective all along was to see that section get paid. I'm pleased to report that the county has, has tasked a grant writer and an engineer that are helping us as we speak to apply for two different grants, and we feel like we will have an excellent opportunity to obtain one or both of these grants. And the county has already approved <coughs> our request for SPLOS funds to use as, a, as the local match for these grants. We think, it's, we think we've got a very, very, very good chance of getting, getting these grants, and uh, we will apply that towards the last 0.56 miles of trail. This is a no-brainer for us because this last remaining section, there are no easements to obtain. It's all on GMC property. We've already got an integral little agreement with GMC. The trail's already, right? the trail's already there. It's, it's already been surveyed. Uh, there's very, very little engineering to do. It's mostly a form and core project. Uh, we don't have any of the impediments that we experienced in, in the project that we just completed. Y'all really don't want to know, but when we turned this trail north to terminate at Flag Chapel, the first thing that we encountered was DNR's Office of Historic Preservation said, well, we'll look at that, but you, you, can't, you can't build a trail this close to Memory Hill Cemetery. It's a historic cemetery. There may be unmarked graves. And we're like, we're outside the fence. They said, doesn't matter. They said, there could be graves under the parking lot at Flash out the church. You know, oh, my word. So, another fifteen dollars to $20,000 for <laughs> trail, 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 trail
in fact, when they finally permitted this trail, they said we will permit it for these conditions. We've got to have a staff archaeologist on site with any any ground disturbing activities. Oh, no worry. So we're only going to disturb four inches. They said it doesn't matter. We've got to have an uh, archaeologist on site. I'm here to tell you though we got it done. And I'm here to thank y'all for your help and support. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, an elected official told me today that every community has a nugget. Every community has a gem. It's an unrealized or unrecognized gem. We think the Oconee River is that gem. I think it's the most underutilized recreational resource in the county. The Greenway, the Oconee River Greenway has opened that corridor to recreational use that heretofore was unprecedented. Now I learned just a few weeks ago I was talking with a Convention and Business Bureau who has some data sets that I found fabulously interesting. The Oconee River Greenway is the second most visited spot in all of Baltimore County, and the average visitation in the last three years, 129,000 visits per year. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. For those of you that are not down there often, you know, our big limitation right now is place to park. You know, like we're, in, in January, when the sun is shining, the parking lot will be completely free. And the thing that has been such a pleasure for us to see is it's all demographic. With grandparents, with grandchildren, their, their students from Georgia students. College, their cadets from GMC. When I meet people down there, I enjoy chatting them up, particularly if there's people that are there visiting. I bump into people that were from Milledgeville that have left and have come back and said, you know, what, a, what a wonderful amenity this is. I never dreamed that something like this was, 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 was capable. Well, Mr. Edwards and I remember when it was the city dump. Oh, yeah. When I was a child, it smoked in 24 7. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's where, it's where, it's where we dumped I mean, our trash and left it ablaze, you know. But uh, to see this having transformed into <coughs> the amenity that it is now for our community, and I'll tell you, this, this has been nothing but a labor of love for a bunch of volunteers. We're just here to say thank you and to let you know we're not finished. We're going ahead with this last half a mile section. I think we've got better than a 90% chance to see that done. And uh, we'll go from there. And let me mention too that, that we don't want to see this trail end to play each other work. I mean, it's just a main ending. But uh, the greater vision, of course, is to, is to get to the Georgia College campus so kids in the campus can have access to the trail just like the people can see them. But more important, like uh, Mary said, if you get to Bonner Park, go back to Fishing Creek, and then back out to Oak Hill, to all the schools, the high school, everything follows Fishing Creek. Right there, Bobcat Bill, which I'm meeting with, uh, with uh, President Collins on Friday. We're trying to make now the county is working on a separate $3 million grant to help with that part. So that really will enable this as a, as a final deal to get out to the athletic conference. So keep your fingers crossed on that. We really that's the next, the next phase, but our promise has really been great on and they're working on the $3 million grant that, 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 that started that one. So we hope this is not going to be Well, and we've, so got, far, we've got an active group of volunteers with the Greenway Foundation that help us with a lot of maintenance issues, a lot of the lightweight lifting. You know, we have gotten done with volunteers, but we call on the city and we call on the, on the county when we've got heavy lifting to do. You know, occasionally we'll have a huge tree that blows down. Flood. There's always cleaning up <laughs> after the flood, but you know, I just we're, we're here to say thank you uh, for we'll the support of the process. And uh, if, if there are any questions, we'll, we'll, we'll be glad to tackle. You too. Thank you so Thank you. 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 Was it, uh, Griffin, have they been received? Or were they not? Uh, they have not yet okay. come in. All right, so at this particular time point, I'll recognize our city manager for his report. All right, I, I, I wish Marion and Bo would have been here to hear me say this, but they they thank the count, the city, but I can assure you if it hadn't been for those two, mm -hmm. this would not have exactly happened. Right. Yeah. Um, 
any of we, it. We spent a lot of time when I was city planner in my office on the phone with DOT. Um, we finally started getting some building done, uh, and uh, it's 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 really nice down there. We've actually got to go down and mow the sewer easements now because it's gotten a little bit grown up, but um, um, it, it's a great amenity. You seldom will go down there, even if you even if you enter the trail at Flag Chapel, that you don't run into people walk in or bike in or uh, run in. Um, the day they had the ribbon cutting, um, three three looked like college students came running down the trail and saw the ribbon cutting going on and turned around and went back and we told them, "Yo, come on, <laughs> perfect timing." But um, it's a uh, it's it's a nice uh, area down there and. Um, we're, we're fortunate to, to have it. Um, I just want to go over kind of quickly the things that are on the agenda for tonight and then a couple of other items that are not items to be voted on, but I'd like your feedback on. Uh, first of all is Ordinance um, 02309-12. That's the second reading um, of the ordinance uh, that um, amends the progressive discipline policy that we have in the personnel policies and procedures. Uh, as I mentioned to you all in a report uh, last week, um, there was one change recommended uh, to where we would put the performance improvement plan in step one, which is a counseling and coaching session, and delete step two, which is where the performance um, improvement plan was located before. Um, and uh, I talked with uh, Ms. Witherspoon, and she and I felt like that was a good suggestion, and so that's what we have done. Uh, obviously, this is the second read tonight, but we can make additional changes uh, on the fly tonight if, if when you all uh, start uh, looking at the potential for voting for that, if we can have some more discussion on it, uh, if necessary. Uh, resolution R-230935 is uh, the resolution pledging to practice and promote civility in the city of Milledgeville. Interestingly enough, uh, of all the things that are on the agenda this week, the civility one is the one that I got a call from the media about. It's the only one I got a call from the media about. And the question was, are people not being civil? And I said, no, 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 no. And I explained to the, to the media representative that this was an initiative of the Georgia Municipal Association, uh, sent, sent them some information um, uh, on it, evidently it was not an exciting enough news story because it never went any further than that. But um, uh, we um, we talked about this when Freddie Broom came to uh, our meeting on August 8th. And um, just to remind you, there are nine pillars of civility that's a part of the Embrace Civility, civility program. Um, and the civility pledge that says the way we govern ourselves as often as is, is in important as the positions we take. Our collective decisions will be better when differing views have had the opportunity to be fully vetted and considered. All people have the right to be treated with respect, courtesy, and openness. All value, we value all input and we commit to conduct ourselves at all times with civility and courtesy to each other. Um, so that is um, what the resolution that you have before you uh, tonight, which is a, a model resolution from GMA, um, includes and associated with that were the be kind buttons that you all had in your boxes uh, <laughs> from the Freddie left. Uh, and uh, um, I got a uh, email from K Love um, from GMA this morning and said, I understand y'all are looking at the civility resolution tonight. And I said, uh, Yes, we are. And, um, and everybody has been given their be kind buttons. So um, most of you, I shared with you all just something that I found humorous when I got an email from a, actually a sales rep that the subject of the email was, um, do, uh, do your um, workings with mayor and council uh, caused you to have sleepless nights. <laughs> and I shared with you all that that was not the case. And uh, I'm fortunate in that because all of my colleagues around the state do not have that luxury. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that uh, we do have discussions. It is done in a civil manner. And um, we will just be putting um, the stamp of, of the city of civility on that tonight when you pass that resolution. 
Resolution R230936 is uh, uh, a resolution to authorize a, a renewal of an agreement with New Singular Wireless for, they call it the Meeks Road uh, tank. Um, it's actually the tank that's on Robertson Mill Road. Um, but um, this agreement <coughs> was originally put in place in 2008 uh, when Mayor Bentley was the mayor. And this is the third amendment to the agreement. Um, and basically what this amendment does is extends the time limit on the agreement again for another five years with the um, expectation that there will be five additional five-year terms added to it so that the contract ultimately goes through March 31st of 2049. Um, the first agreement that was signed in 2008 uh, was for $1,500 per month, and it is currently up to $4,400 per month. So we have, we have nothing to do with that except for providing the water tank that they put it on. Um, and uh, we are fortunate to be able to keep these on our tanks. More and more of the cellular companies are, are building their own towers. Um, and uh, so it truly is passive income for the city that we have the opportunity to enjoy. Uh, each five-year um, renewal of that agreement, there'll be a 5% rent increase uh, on the agreement. So uh, we will continue to, uh, to have that passive income from that. Um, resolution 2309-37 uh, uh, is uh, authorizing the mayor to sign an agreement with Simonton Engineering. Um, as I mentioned in a report to you all last week, uh, we, we uh, did a temporary uh, channelization of traffic for Lakeview Primary and Midway Hills Primary Schools on Blandy Road where uh, everyone exiting those two schools are, are forced to turn right onto Blandy Road. Um, it has worked wonderfully well according to the school system and um, uh, we're helping them get the engineering done to put that in uh, permanently. Uh, this will be funded through um, some of the Red Speed uh, camera uh, revenue that has been generated and that's one of the things that um, the state statute um, enables and actually requires that safety for the school system be um, improved with those some of those funds so that's the way we're, we're doing uh, that those are the items that we have to vote on tonight uh, i do want to share with you and, and get any comments from you for those of you that have them we have been in talks with and uh, discussions with and meetings with the school system since the april water um, issue about uh, the potential for providing a redundant water uh, supply for them in conjunction with the county. Uh, this was actually a conversation that was initially started by Commissioner Craig with the county um, and um, the county would allow for um, tying in to their line on Highway 49 at Blandy Road uh, into a line that the city has that follows Blandy Road and then when it gets to ABC Drive it would turn uh, and go down ABC Drive all the way over to um, the, uh, the area near the football field and um, near um, I think these since they changed the names of the schools I can't keep up with them but um, that's Lakeview Academy Academy over there um, and there actually is an old line that that follows the new line fairly closely uh, but it broke some years ago even before these properties were built and dirt was hauled in and put on top of it and it is beneath the bus garage now so that line cannot be repaired so it would have to be installed for a new line um, I have the, the school system has asked about the potential for um, us sharing in the cost of that with them. Um, in, in addition to the financial uh, commitment, I have some concerns with it setting a precedent for providing redundant water supply to some other areas in the city. Um, so I, I would 
look forward to your comments on that that I can take back to Dr. Price uh, either tonight or if you'd like to, to send me some comments uh, by email or with phone calls, we can do that. But um, we've estimated that the project should come in not to exceed uh, uh, almost $351,000. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, a, that's a lot of money out of our water and sewer okay. budget. And um, like I said, it, it sets a precedent for providing redundant water supply to other entities in the city. So. Um, can I give a little feedback? Yes, right ma'am. Please I, do. I have strong concerns. Um, I brought this just in case uh, you all, well, with my tax things, it, it may be different from you all. And I have to be careful what I'm, what I'm saying because I work with the school system, but then I have to be fair about this whole thing too. too. The school system, I'm going to take this mask off so there won't be no misinterpretations. The school taxes are already getting 59.27%. I'm constantly hearing the older senior citizens saying, why am I paying school taxes when I don't have any children in school? That's the first thing. Then the second thing is that if we do this for the school, I love the children. I, w I want everything to be the best for the children. But we have to think about the hospitals. We have to think about the prisons. We have to think about the merchants. You know, we once we get started doing that, we have to think about the others also. This the school system is a small portion of the pie. We need to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just how I feel. I, I just want to add to what uh, Dr. Lee said because when when I first read this, the first thing I thought about was the hospital. And I thought, mm, you know, priority, priority here, and and um, nursing, you know, just just thinking about all of all all of those different people, like she said, senior citizens that have had to do without water, and um, I understand. I'm I'm like Dr. Lee. I sympathize and I understand, but then I'm like Hank. I don't want to just say that we selected um, one customer above any other. And, and and make that make that appear as if we're saying that at some point you're more important than this this person. And um, I, I just think that we have to be really careful with making these types of decisions um, to just look at the whole pie, like she said, not just a piece of it, but the entire pie before we bite some of it off. Thank you. What else? And our, our children are important. Very. Uh, People in the hospital that are are sick are are important as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got to. We really need to talk about it. A couple of things that uh, that haven't been mentioned. One in particular is uh, the fact that the county would be feeding it with um, extremely high pressure water. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd have to put in um, pressure relief exactly. valves. Yep. And this system would have to be um, put into use periodically. We could not wait five years down the road or ten years down the road or whatever when we had an outage uh, to cut it on mm -hmm. and hope that it was going to work uh, because it, it is coming in at such a high pressure. If that pressure relief valve fails, then we'll probably pop just about everything within that whole school system with, I don't even remember what the PSI was of the, high. Of the system coming in, but it was a couple of hundred. Because it's coming off that hopeful tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's coming off high. So yeah. it, you know, there, there's some liability issues in there as well, and uh, something that we certainly have to, to think about. But. Uh, you know, what, what we as a city pledge is that we're going to do our best to have the best water and water system and sewage system that we can provide. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have uh, indicated moving forward. Uh, we're having engineering done now as we speak. Uh, we want to get to that point of being able to upgrade our plant upgrade our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our worst areas are already looked at. Some are already getting 
ready to be worked upon, and I think that's where our focus needs to be, mm -hmm. and, um, as well as our money. Mm -hmm. We can use the money. As the, city, uh, the city's money. Yep. And not only that, but we've also put equip bought equipment, purchased mm -hmm. equipment to help us. Right. To be able to deal with that, so we're 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 doing everything that we're we committed. Should, uh, we're committed to, to what to, we can do to not yep. having those issues in in the um, future. So I just think that you know we just can't look at just one one system and say that um, well we need to make sure that you you're okay when everybody else is suffering. So we just have to look at the whole thing. I think everybody's echoing the same sentiments. Miss um, Matt, did you want to? We uh, I was reminded of something with Mr. Chambers comments too. I've shared with you all, I think it was maybe three meetings ago that we, we have two currently have two infrastructure projects that we've done engineering on and we haven't had anybody bid on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have been in touch with an organization called Gordian. Uh, which is actually the holder of the uh, Department of Administrative Services contract with the state. They have um, a total of about 26 contractors, about eight in the central Georgia area, that um, you contract with Gordian, and the Gordian then pulls those contractors in to do your work. And um, I had met with them one time, then Tim and Robert and I met with them a second time last week, and we are going to send them the scope of work on the uh, Montgomery Street uh, replacement project and um, see what that looks like in terms of cost with them, okay. and, and we may start using them to do some of our work. Uh, because they are on the state contract list and have the DOAS contract, that actually takes the bidding process out of it. Okay. And um, they even have uh, contractors who have engineers on staff that if you agree to contract with them, they actually come in and work out the scope of work without even having to pay additional for engineering. So there's some, I think there's some really positives there. Mm -hmm. And I think the Montgomery Street project would be a great one for us to test out. Uh, with them, and I'll I'll, sh I'll I'll bring more information to you about that later on down the road. But I, I think, and obviously, you all will have to approve the contract if that happens. But uh, I'm excited about having the potential possibly to work with them. They have done some projects with Stockbridge, and I talked to Mayor Ford um, and uh, their Public Works Director, and they were very pleased with uh, with the company. And so we will continue to look at those. Um, just a couple of other quick things. Uh, open enrollment information for uh, those of you that need it uh, was in your box when you got here. Actually, it was in all of these box, but for those of you who need it, um, uh, that information is on there. Open enrollment begins October 1, Sandra, is that right? Uh, mm -hmm. And goes through October 30th. Um, and um, if you have any questions, uh, Sandra can help you with that. Uh, Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was doing it from memory, and it was right there on my very next page in my stack. But um, Ms. Shenholster had had uh, mentioned the, about the possibility of sending a letter uh, against Federal um, House Resolution 3372, which was the pilot project dealing with heavier trucks on the road. Uh, I shared with you all last week that I would try to have a draft ready for us to discuss tonight. I do not have that ready because I'm still waiting on some information from Elizabeth uh, Bolstad with the uh, Coalition Against Bigger Trucks, um, but I will continue to work with her and get that and get a draft of it together and send it to you all via email and, and um, we'll make the changes that we need to and have it available for those of you that wish to, to sign at our October 8th meeting. And just to, just to um, speak on that, um, of course, I've, I've been a part of that coalition for a while uh, uh, against that, um, and it did pass out of committee at the federal level um, a couple of weeks ago, and, I, when, and then I sent the information to Hank because if we don't, um, and I was asking him to, act, to see if we can't send something to our um, delegation at the federal level, because if, if it passes there, of course, you all know that at the state level, 
it was left in committee last session, and if it passes at the federal level, then I'm sure the state's just going to um, automatically send it on, send it out of committee and follow suit. And then you know this is this is going to be one of those unfunded mandates that, you know, even though it's it it'll be mandated that that you know it's a, it's allowed, but then they don't tell us how to fund the streets and roads when they tear them up because of the way um, they are, you know, there's a lot of information being passed that now it's already at 80,000 pounds and they push it to 90, 91 to 96,000 pounds. So if you, if you increase that to 88,000 pounds plus the 10% more, it's gonna be well, uh, well over 100,000 pounds that will be traveling. And not only will it wreak havoc on the highways and the, and the local streets and everything where these trucks have to come, but imagine that kind of weight shifting forward in an accident. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 just, it's devastating just to think about it. When you think about the number of state routes we have in our community, right. coming straight, right. through, downtown. Coming straight through downtown. Coming straight through downtown. Right. So it, it's, it's, it's something that we really need to press our um, well, and, and local, and all of our delegations about not passing. Beyond uh, what it does to our roads is what it does to our buildings and all you have to do is just sit in one and wait for these, <laughs> yeah. <ru> these <laughs> right. trucks to come through right. and it rattles it i mean the windows right. rattle everything right. well and, and, you know with the with historic buildings uh, that certainly have age um, mm -hmm. this is going to do nothing but um, create cost and and damage and and possible um, you know having to raise the building right not to mention too um, when we think about infrastructure we never think about the overpasses and underpasses on the interstate and the local bridges that we have that are aged and you know you just imagine yourself traveling on the interstate when the when the overpass above you collapses oh. because you got 10 or 15 of those vehicles those heavy trucks sitting on top of your head so it's it's just it, it is really i know that um a lot of this is being pushed through by the port uh right. and then we won't you know because so many rail systems are being abandoned and so the port savannah uh, port is pushing this um to and well all ports <coughs> to get it done because the way to transport now is is over the highways and uh, because the rail, ra railroad has been so uh, non-functional in, in so many of our smaller cities, but they, you know, just not thinking about what, how dangerous it is to um, those of us who travel as well. So I encourage you to sign that if you would. Uh, lastly, I'm sorry. Um, Hank and I asked. I sent Hank an email with some attachment right. sample attachments for him to create one, and he's he's supposed to create one for us to sign off okay. on. Uh, and lastly, uh, as I mentioned uh, two weeks ago, we received the CDBG grant for uh, Milledgeville Estates water system, uh, and uh, that check presentation will be in Augusta on October 25th. We need to register you by October 2nd if you would like to go. Uh, that will be at noon in Augusta on the 25th, so please let us know um, uh, by the end of this week if you can, if you'd like to go, so we can get you, get you registered. Um, yeah. I'm writing these down because Mr. Chambers told me he was going something to, to something last week and I didn't write it down. <laughs> <laughs> you got me a coffee? I do. Okay. I have I'm a pretty, question. I'm I want to go back. One, one of the things when you was talking about the schools doing the channeling of the roads with the primary school, do you have any kind of data or something to support that? Because I don't take that route. Do, do you have something that support that? Or mayor or uh, map, do y'all go that way? Or making the left turn going out the exits. I do. I mean, I right do turn. Too. You do. I do, too, when it I'm works. picking up my it grandkids. Works. It really will. Because mm -hmm. you remember, I used to have, to have a deputy standing right, in the Right, right. But see, I don't I don't take that route, because I went to the academy. It's working, and the, the traffic is more calmer now. People are taking their time. OK. It's, it's working. <laughs> and it, 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 it appears to have made people automatically slow down. Uh, going through there and, and of course we still we still will be installing red speed cameras on Blandy Road 
That's why I don't take Blanda Rub. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the flashing lights are already there. We got the flashing lights up before the cameras. Now, 49, we got the cameras up. We got to come back and put the flashing lights up for what you all approved two weeks ago. So. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we. Um, They're only giving warnings right now. That's right. right. That's I right. still don't take First of October, you're going to get it. I'm going to get it. On the 25th, noon. So um, <coughs> obviously I'll be going uh, and uh, I can carry uh, actually four others with me if three of you sit across the back. So um, for those of you that end up being registered, I'll contact you about a, a departure time uh, down the road. But so far I've got Ms. Holstrom and Mayor Copeland. Mm hmm. We got the GMA district meeting on the 25th. I'll catch that if you are. No, I thought GMA was on another day. That's our district meeting. So district 6 is on the 26th. October 26th. The, the uh -huh. third Thursday is the yeah, district meeting. Yeah, I put everything on my calendar. So. Yeah. I'm looking at it. It is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And I will not be going to the district meeting. I'll be on the way to St. Simons. So. <laughs> Georgia Florida game that week. Notice I paused. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's uh that that's he did. That's to be right. That's all I have, Mayor, unless there are additional questions for me. There any other questions for Mr. Griffin? Uh, please, if you did not respond, they would like for council members too to respond to the uh, uh, evaluation form that Linda, what's her name? Ms. Lin Linda, Natalie Linda no, from the Union Recorder sent out. So it was due tonight. If y'all can't answer those questions, it's just talking about the jobs, percentages, how you think. Uh, they're doing with bringing jobs here or what have you. So if you can, just try to get it done tonight. Um, mm -hmm. All right, that's being all from the city manager. I'll move to old business and I'll ask the clerk to read ordinance 0 2309 12. That's the second reading of the ordinance to amend the personnel policies and procedures. An ordinance to replace the progressive discipline chapter of the City of Millersville Personnel Policies and Procedures. Uh, you have heard the ordinance. Is there a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Second. Well, we'll probably motion and second. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Ms. Walden? Aye. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Mm -hmm. So we'll move to new business, and I'll ask the clerk to read resolution R-2309-35 by caption. A resolution pledging to practice and promote civility in the city of Millersville, Georgia. You have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So move. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Be kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Ms. Walden? Aye. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Schenholz? Aye. And let me make a note, Mayor, that is a resolution that all of you will be signing, so Bo will be getting in touch with you to sign that. So. Right, the resolution is adopted as official. I will ask the clerk to read resolution R-2309-36 by caption. To authorize the third amendment to the tower attachment lease with new singular wire wireless PCS LLC 
to extend and modify the terms and conditions for the placement of equipment on the Meeks water tank located at 139 Robertson Mill Road. All right, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Ms. Walden? Aye. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. The resolution is adopted. I'll ask the clerk to please read resolution R-2309-37 by caption. A resolution to authorize and accept a proposal from Simonton Engineering, LLC to provide the engineering services associated with traffic channelization or channel channelizing on Blandy Road to accommodate Lakeview Primary School and Midway Hills Primary School traffic. You have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Walden? Aye. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Resolution is adopted. <coughs> we don't have any appointments tonight, uh, but we do have one alcohol license application that I will ask the clerk to present at this time. This is for Harul Sunil Kumar Patel for Mahdev 2024 LLC and for uh, located at 913. 911. Is it not? Okay, yeah, 911. 911 uh, South Main Street, Millersville, Georgia, and it is for beer and wine retail package to go. Mm -hmm. Is it 913? Well, it is. It's, it's, okay. Well, it was 911 and then changed to 913. I don't know. That could be. I think it's like actually 913. 913. It is on the second page. Yeah. Okay. So you have heard the application. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Are there any questions or discussion? Is it approved? The motion is approved as a motion and second is approved as adopted. Are there any? Uh, Need to vote. I thought you we just know. did. <laughs> that was me. Okay. Ms. Walden? Aye. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Now the application is approved. All right, we need to go into closed session tonight to discuss legal and personnel matters. I need a motion, please, to go into closed session. Motion to go into closed session. Second. Mm -hmm. Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, Ms. Walden? Aye. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Ms. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. Aye. So this how this is how we will convene to go into closed session in personnel and legal matter and then we'll reconvene after we're done in executive session. Hold on Walt. Uh, our regular <laughs> session convening back to our reconvening back to our regular session. Is there a motion to open up our session? Regular session. So move. We'll Second. Up. All right, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Ms. Walden? Here. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Ms. Mapp? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Dr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. 
Okay, we oh, have. here. I'm sorry. Four eyes and two ears. Still passes. Uh huh. All right. We have returned to open session, and that concludes the items on the agenda. Is there any other, any, are there any comments or announcements for council? And I left out one. Um, the next uh, meeting in. November. Is that I'm going to recon uh, reconstruct the policy committee. Is it November, October. October. Or oh, 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 yeah, possibly November. November. Yeah. So yeah. the, the November. Two additional uh, personnel policy. Okay. So we'll in uh, November, probably the first meeting in November, we'll reconvene and reconstruct mm -hmm. our personnel policy committee. Okay. Um, there be no any. If there be no other comments from council, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Miss Walden. Aye. Mr. Chambers. Aye. Miss Mapp. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Dr. Lee. Aye. Miss Shinholster. Aye. All right. I'm gonna hit this thing for a good chance. Meet in a day. There you go. <laughs>